Alright, so, um, let's take the derivative of this. We were trying to find dy over dx. So, the derivative, and we're differentiating with respect to x, so the derivative of x squared is 2x. The derivative of negative 3 natural log of y would be negative 3 times the derivative of the natural log is 1 over whatever's inside the natural log times its derivative. Well, the derivative of y with respect to x is dy over dx. Plus derivative of y squared, 2y. Again, we took the derivative of y, so we need to multiply by dy over dx. Be careful. This is where the majority of people make their mistakes, and they put this answer choice on there. That right side is 0. The derivative of 10 is 0. And I, I do this more than anybody. Trust me. Uh, when I'm doing these problems, several times I've caught myself because um, I take the derivative of all the stuff on the left side, and then I forget that that's just a constant, so it's 0. All right? We need to isolate the dy over dx, so let's start by moving the 2x to the other side, and at the same time, I'm going to go ahead and factor out that dy over dx just to save myself some time and effort. Okay, and then we divide by that binomial. Now, to be honest, I cannot guarantee you this is not the answer in the back of the book. This is not the answer that's going to be on the AP exam. They are not going to leave that fraction within a fraction. So what they're going to do is they're going to go through and they're going to multiply everything by y. So the actual answer choice that's going to show up is going to be negative 2xy <coughs> excuse me, over negative 3 plus 2y squared. That's how the answer will appear on the exam. They don't rationalize, but they do not leave complex fractions. And by rationalize, y'all know that I mean square roots in the denominator. They're okay with that, but they don't leave complex fractions. Okay, so you try number 74. Number 75 says, show that the function is a solution of the differential equation. So they give you the function y equals 2 times the natural log of x plus 3. And then they give you what we call a differential equation. Now, a differential equation just means that it has derivatives in it. So it's saying that x times this, uh, y double prime plus y prime apparently equals 0. So what we need to do is we need to take our y. We need to find y prime. When you find y double prime, we're going to plug it into that differential equation and show that, that when we simplify it, it's equal to zero. All right, so let's do that. y prime would be 2 times the natural uh, 1 over x, uh, which I'm going to rewrite as 2 over x, and I'm also going to write it as 2 times x to the negative 1 because. I'm going to have to take the second derivative as well for my differential equation. So my second derivative is negative 2x to the negative 2, and I'm going to rewrite that as negative 2 over x squared. Because when I go over here, to me, it's easier to simplify when I express it that way. Okay, so when we go over to the differential equation, we have x times our second derivative, negative 2 over x squared, plus our first derivative, 2 over x. When we simplify that first one, the x over x squared simplifies 2 over x, and we have negative 2x plus 2 over x, which is 0. So we verified that it is a solution to that differential equation. Okay, that's really all you have to do for this. Now, um, are you going to be tested on that? No. Okay, but the reason why we're doing this problem is because we are going to, one of the last things we do before the exam is we talk about um, solving differential equations. So you're going to have to go from x times y double prime plus y prime, and you're going to have to find, figure out what y is. Okay, now it sounds really, really complicated, but just introducing the idea of this differential equation thing. Okay? So... You guys try number 76. This is part of what's neat about saving exponentials and logarithms to this point 
is because we can use it as a review for stuff like this. We've done relative extrema and inflection points. We did those months ago when we did derivatives, right? Um, because relative extrema come from what? Critical numbers, which are derivative equal to zero. Where do inflection points come from? Second derivative equal to zero. And just to be on the safe side, since it says relative extrema and inflection points, not just critical points, um, we've got to make sure there's a change. Okay, there must be a change. So once we find these, we have to confirm that it does change from positive to negative. Okay, so we need to take the derivative. Um, now, it's not implicit, so that's nice. All right, um, dy over dx or y prime, however you want to look at it. x squared over 2, that's just 1 half x um, squared. So uh, taking its derivative, excuse me, 1 half times 2x minus 1 over x, so that's going to give us x minus 1 over x. Now, um, I'm going to factor this because I know I'm going to have to set it equal to 0. So I'm going to take an x out of both terms and when we do that it leaves us with 1 minus x squared. No, it does not. Oh. x to the negative 1, uh, x to the negative 2, excuse me. Whew. Okay, 1 minus x to the negative 2, because we're going to set that equal to 0. So we've got x is equal to 0, that is a uh, potential relative extrema. 1 minus x to the negative 2 is equal to 0, that is a potential uh, uh, extrema. So 1 is equal to x to the negative 2. Um, raise that to the negative 1 half, which is the square root, 1 over the square root. So um, this would be calculated after. Well, not really. It says confirm by a graphing calculator. All right, what's the problem? Okay, hang on. Let's go right back here. So 1 is equal to x to the negative 2. We okay with that? Yes. Okay. No, it wasn't wrong. I'm backing up and slowing down. Okay? So if you're solving 1 is equal to x to the negative 2, you've got a couple of options. Okay? Um, but... I look at it as raising that to the reciprocal power, right? Because when you raise a power to a power, you multiply, so negative 2 times negative 1 half is 1. We get x to the first on that side. Raise 1 to the negative 1 half power. Now, 1 to any power is 1, but we need to think about this for a second because um, the 1 half power is the square root. So the square root of 1, we really technically need to consider positive and negative 1. Now the negative just moves it to the denominator. 1 over 1 is still 1. So we get positive and negative 1 as potential critical points. Now, um, something that you should keep in mind, anytime you're doing a problem involving natural logs, exponentials, you need to keep in mind your domain. Um, the domain of this function, the first part of it is polynomial. x squared over 2, that domain's all real numbers. But the natural log of x, what can we not plug into the natural log? Negative numbers, okay? Anything less than zero. We can't plug zero in either, okay? You're correct. We cannot plug zero in either, um, but we definitely can't plug in negative numbers either. So um, x has to be greater than zero is our domain. Um, so technically, if you left off the negative one there, it wouldn't really hurt you because negative one's not even a part of the domain. Um, but I did it because in other contexts it, it would hurt me, okay? Um, so zero and positive one are our critical points, but it said to find the extrema, so we need to actually plug those in. Nope, we can't use zero either, because zero is not in our domain. So really all we have to do is check one, okay? Um, so 
1 squared over 2 minus the natural log of 1. So we have 1 half minus, what's the natural log of 1 without your calculator? Nope. 0. How do we figure that out other than just guessing that it should be 0? Okay. Because if we're solving logarithms, remember logarithms say that the base to some number is what's inside my logarithm. Well, what's the base of the natural log? E. Okay, so E to some power is one. Well, the only way to raise an irrational number to a power and get one is if that power is zero. So the natural log of one is zero. So we have a uh, either a maximum or a minimum at one one half. Now, how would we check that? We would check it by plugging in numbers into our derivative. So let's plug in. What happens if we plug in two? Two minus one half is, it doesn't really matter. It's a positive number. So it's positive to the right. So it's increasing to the right of this. So is this a minimum or a maximum? Minimum. If it's increasing to the right, it made a minimum. So we have minimum at one, one half. We need inflection point, so that's our second derivative. So y double prime is um, derivative of x is 1. Derivative of negative 1 over x would be positive 1 over x squared. If you need to make that a negative power, that's fine. Okay. We need to just have that equal to zero. So solving that, we have one over x squared equals negative one. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna multiply both sides by x squared. So uh, negative one is equal to x squared. Is that possible? Can x squared equal a negative number? No, not possible, so no inflection points. Now it does say to confirm this with the graphing calculator, so let's do look at the graph of this really quickly. What was our original function? x squared over 2 minus the natural log of 1, or natural log of x. Okay, x squared over 2 minus the natural log, I don't know where my natural log is on here, of x. So look at the graph real quick and you can see all right our function does not exist until when it's greater than zero there's our minimum there at one one half and it's always concave up okay it does not change concavity um, so it does not have any inflection all right so